everybody, welcome to the gymnasium at Ch Champlin Park High School in Champlin, Minnesota for CTN Coon Rapids coverage of high school girls gymnastics. I'm Mike Peterson alongside Kether Laszlo. Kether Laszlo. Kether, thank you for joining me on this pleasant evening. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. If you're tuning in, um, our first varsity event is down at the vault where we have Champlin Park leading off. I believe our first vaulter was Teresa Ung. With a very nice strong start. The handspring vault clean landing. This is a triangular double duel is what they're calling it on the program. Three teams, competitors from Champlin Park Blaine Andover, and of course our Coon Rapids Cardinals. Next up will be Myra Kohler. A little bit more of an advanced vault. She did a half twist on and a half twist off. Vault is one of those fun events where it's a little trickier to tell what's going on because there's so many little details that they're looking at with how much pow power they come off of the board as well as their landing. This is Kohler again with her second attempt. Competitors get two vaults, correct? Yep, yep, they get two vaults, and the best score of the two of them is what gets used. On that attempt for Myra Kohler, we have an 8 point, is that 8.1? 8 point one? Point yep. eight one. 8 point one. Which is a very good score. That next Beautiful. vault was by Hannah Davis. We did have another half on, half off. One of the more complicated vaults. That was her first attempt. We will wait her initial score for her first vault. 7.7 7 and an 8.0. I'm not sure how much I trust that. Another good second vault. Now, do you typically do the same vault with two attempts, or do you try a different vault? It is up to the gymnast. Most commonly, you will see them do the same vault. Um, but you can do a different one if you'd like. You don't, you don't see that nearly as often, though. Um, typically, you want your best out of your two same attempts, you know, where one could be harder than the other. Next up, I believe, for Champlain Park, we will have Kaylee O'Brien with her first attempt. Looking at the previous scores, we have an 8.0 and a 7.9. That was for the second vault for Myra Kohler. That was a very, very beautiful vault from her. She just did a Yurchenko. And now what is a Yurchenko? She did a round off and a backhand spring over the vault. So even more difficult than the ones we just saw actually. Thank you for explaining that for myself as well as anybody watching at home. Kaylee will await to make her second vault. Waiting for the judges to reveal the vault, an 8.0 and an 8.4. Yeah, that was very good. She definitely had a lot of ease when she did that, very eloquent. Now, as a judge, what is something that you're usually looking for when you are doing the scoring for each one of these vaults? Um, how much height they get off of the vault, 
Um, obviously, sticking the landing is a big part of it. Even how they hit it, hit the board, um, You ideally you want to be kind of uh, feet first, a little bit set back um, when you bounce on it, and that gives you the most power going into it. This next vault is by Melina Ung. A little bit of a step there. She did a handspring on and a twist off, half twist off. The scores for uh, Kaylee O'Brien on that, her second vault were at 8.1 and 8.4. Average of 8.25. Much larger step there on the dismount. Yep, you could definitely tell she had a lot more power off of that vault for sure. Now where, as a gymnast, how do you generate uh, power as off the vault? Is it mostly in the speed in which you're running with? The uh, speed definitely has a factor. The biggest part of vault, though, is how much pop you have off of your shoulders. So you don't want your arms bending. That will basically steal all of your power completely. But if you can pop right off of the board, that will be your best shot at having a successful vault. Melina Ung, her second vault, 8685 for an average score of 85. Teams will switch over. We should see our Coon Rapids Cardinals taking the vault next. We'll step aside for that and be right back with gymnastics action. <laughs> Welcome back to Champlin Park for Coon Rapids CTN's coverage of gymna high school gymnastics. Coon Rapids Cardinals starting off on the vault. Now, Erica Cotto with her first vault. And a stuck landing. We'll wait her scores. Five competitors for Coon Rapids. Erica ready for her second attempt. First attempt a 7-4 and a 7-2. Another good second hand spring. One thing teams do try and do is put the first person on each rotation as a good score, a good, um, a confident gymnast, someone that is not going to let the team down. They're maybe not the best, but they will definitely get the energy up and make sure the rest of the team does what they need to do. A 7.5 and a 7.3 for Koto's second vault. Next up, Angel Marshall. Got a half hand spring and a half twist off. Now having that strong gymnast go first, is that similar to the reason is why you would have your best gymnast go last? Exactly. End on a good note, start on a good note. Ooh. Looks like Angel gets the restarter run attempt. Oh, they're letting her do it. Awesome. Ooh. That time she did touch the vault, so they won't let her do it again. So that will be the completion of her second attempt. Correct. 
for her first vault, she did have a 7.6 and a 7.7. Which is a decent first vault. Judges give the signal. Lily Newton, your third competitor for Coon Rapids. Did another half twist on and a half twist off. Scores coming in for Lily's first. Looks like the judges are actually having a little bit of a discussion. Now Lily gives the gets the ready. A little bit better of a vault for her. Another half on, half off. And that is one of our captains. This whole lineup for vault actually is all captains except for one, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't have grades for any of our competitors on any of our info that we were given. It was a very good vault. Another half twist, half twist off. Do you see a lot of the competitors doing similar vaults? Um, you'll see a lot of the twisting vaults. Um, it's a really uh, easy way to get your start value up higher. Anytime you can add a twist to it, it's going to give you that extra bonus as if you just did it straight on. 8-2 for Celia on her first vault. Vault is also one of those events where it does take a lot to get all of that momentum, all of that energy, all of that power that it needs to complete everything too. So really the more twisting that you see, the harder it is to get it accomplished. 8.0 and an 8.3 for Celia. That will bring up our final gymnast, Ada Drummy. And that was a beautiful vault to have as an anchor. Another half on, half off. Drummy competing in the Rogers invite on the 28th. Finished 17th out of that competition. Another good second vault from her, and she is one of the three all-around gymnasts for Coon Rapids as well. Yes, the other two all-around competitors. Angel Marshall and uh, Cecilia O'Reilly. Yes, sorry. Don't have it on my sheet. Here they are. That looks like it's it for Coon Rapids on the vault. Next we will see Blaine Andover. Coon Rapids will travel over to the bars as well as everybody else and our competitors. Still a few competitors going on the uneven bars. And so while we wait for them to finish up, we will step aside, take a quick break. Be back with more gymnastics after this.
back again at Champlain Park High School with this triangular double duel. Up now on the vault, Blaine Andover. First up, Ella Doles. Looks like she did a half on and a half off, but she maybe wanted to do a full off. Not quite sure, but we'll get a second look at it. Little bit of discussion. What would be some of the things happening right now between the coach and your athlete? Um, any last minute tips on what she maybe could have done? Um, and also potentially the decision of, do I want to continue to do that for the second vault or do I want to just do a different vault that maybe is a little bit safer? Looks like they came to some sort of agreement. Ella getting the ready. Yep, so she did a half on, half off. So they went they went clean, which is smart. Always want to start strong. Garnered some high fives from her coaches. Gymnastics is such a mental sport too that for sure how your teammates are doing affects how you are doing. If you have a great routine in front of you, you're gonna be feeling excited and pull out a great routine yourself. Now on the vault, we have Iris Russell with her first vault. Also having more communication with her coaches. Ella Dole's average 7.95. Iris with a 7.3 and a 7.7. She'll get ready to take her second vault. Another half on, half off. Looks like she might have tweaked something. Yeah, she does look like she's hurting a little bit. Does sporting the ankle brace and a knee brace. Yeah. Hopefully nothing too serious. Looks like she's able to walk it off. A 7-7 seven, seven and 7-6 seven, for her second vault. Now we have Jada Bonson. Ooh. Coach having a laugh with her. Trying to laugh that one off. Which is always good, stay positive. Looked like she was trying to do a souk though, which is a, basically a half on and a flip off. Seven six and a seven three from the judges on that first vault. She did a half on and a half off. Now how devastating is it with a fall on a vault like that versus any other kind of point deduction? I mean, it always sucks falling, um, but the one redeeming factor to vault is you do get a second one. 7.5 and a 7.6 on the second attempt. Now we'll have Abby Blomquist. Bloomquist. Apologies if I butcher any names throughout this competition. And she did a half on and a full twist off, which I believe is the first time we've seen that tonight. Blaine Andover, coached by Ashley Howard. Another half on, full off. 
Now, is there any discrimination versus a larger step versus a shorter step or a hop on the dismount? One step is still one step. Um, hops are worth a little bit more than a step, but each step you take would be a separate deduction. So if they take two steps back, that's two separate deductions instead of just one big deduction for one big step, you know? I do, now that you've explained it. <laughs> Scores for Abby an 8.1 and an 8.0 on that second attempt. So we are waiting for Sophia Larson. Got some excitement for this vault. Beautiful. She did a Yurchenko layout flip. Now I noticed she definitely had a, a longer run up on her approach compared to the other competitors. Yep, that's all personal preference. So the gymnasts get to pick how far back, where they like to start. But the main thing is that they keep it consistent. You want to have the same number of steps before each vault so you know exactly where gonna, you're going to hit that board. Just like with the height. That's also the height of the vault is also adjustable, and each gymnast will have their preference on that as well. 9.5 on that first attempt. And 9.5 is a huge, huge score. Certainly the largest score we've seen so far. She should be very happy with both of those, I can imagine. We will await the score of her second attempt. Any sort of deductions for the coach kind of stepping in for the embracement there? I don't think she should have any deductions for that one because they stepped in right at the end for the spotting, so I don't think it should affect her score at all. And looking like an 8.8 .8 on her second vault. Which is also a strong score. So that'll do it for the competitors from Blaine. And that'll actually do it for all of our competitors with the vault. We will do our next rotation. All of our varsity competitors will be going to the uneven bars. And we will have all that action after this. <laughs> Back again at Champlain Park High School for this triangular double dual gymnast event. We have moved from the vault over to the uneven bars. Currently have Champlain competitor Myra Kohler. Pretty strong start to her bar routine. Had a little bit of help up top. Oh my. The fall. Looks like she's okay. Yep, she tried doing a flyaway off the bars. Looked like she bailed a little early, but she is okay, and that's what matters. Certainly being met, being consoled by her teammates, making sure she's okay. Seems to, to be to positive about it, yeah. Trying to laugh it off. Sometimes that can rattle the next gymnast in the row, which is why they usually start with a pretty strong start. But Speaking of our next gymnast, Ophelia Schumacher. Waiting for the judges. Four three and a four point zero for Myra. And again, this is Ophelia Schumacher, Schumacher. 
for Blaine. Apologies again for butchering any names. And it looks like she was able to pull through the pressure, had a pretty strong routine. We'll await her scores. Teresa Ung will be your third competitor for Champlin Park. Seeing a Gymnast has really clean form. I know we've been talking about it during the breaks. Is that an indication of perhaps where they train? Yeah, it is. So obviously high school gymnastics doesn't start until you're in high school. So a lot of these gymnasts did come from at least some training beforehand. Um, a lot of times it's either they're in club gymnastics or they just have some background where they've learned some skills when they join the team. That looked like a pretty good dismount for Melina. She'll get some high fives from her teammate. Await her score. Kaylee O'Brien, final competitor for Champlin Park. We'll wait to get the ready from the judges from her. A 4.25 and a 4.5 are the two scores from Malina. Kaylee starting nice over Nice switch kip start. She's doing a really good job of connecting all of her skills, which is a big thing that the judges look for. Two B skills back to back. A beautiful stuck landing. Fly away, dismount. Fist bumps from her coach. Got to be happy with that one. Champion Park is coached by Jonathan Wynia. I'm sorry, I missed a competitor. That was Melina Ung. Now we have Kaylee O'Brien, the fifth and final competitor in this event. score from the first judge is a 7.6. Certainly the highest score we've seen so far. From the Champion Park team. And another 7.6. So that'll bring up Kaylee O'Brien. Officially our final competitor for Champion Park. can definitely tell Kaylee's had some good training. She did a kip into a clear hip circle handstand, jump to the high bar. And another stuck landing. So that was two pretty good routines, I imagine, for Champlain Park to start. Yeah, very good finish for them. We will await their scores. 
Maybe hearing some music happening from the floor routine. Currently have the uh, JV team of Blaine and Over competing on the floor. Still waiting on the scores from Kaylee. Looks like the other judge. Oh, I thought they were gonna have a little meeting. Yeah, I'm not sure it's taking the score so long. Looks like an eight, an 8.1 and an 8.2. Okay. For Kaylee. Very strong finish then. So that will be it for Champlain Park on the uneven bars. We will see Coon Rapids up next. And we will step aside. We'll be right back after this. Back here at the gymnastics meet at Champlain Park High School. We're on our second rotation, second team on this rotation, your Coon Rapids Cardinals. Up first, first competitor, Angel Marshall. And this is the first event that they are short people and they don't have the full five people in their rotation. Um, and that is because they have a few key seniors that are out on injury right now. But that just gives the team more opportunity to step up and make it happen. Now how can that, that affect uh, team scoring if you're figuring averages uh, having seven competitors versus four? Yeah, so the top four scores count towards the team score. So if you only have four people competing, all four of those scores are counting. Where if you have more people competing, say you have seven or eight people competing, you know, that's three, three scores that you can drop at the bottom and keep your higher scores. So really it puts the pressure on the team because every single routine counts. Scores are starting to come in for Marshall. Next competitor will be Lily Newton. She waits for the judges to give her the signal. And Lily is one of the captains as well. And Lily gets her ready. Scores for Angel 3-8, 4.5. A nice transition from the low bar to the high bar. Oh. Looks like she didn't quite make her dismount, but that's okay. It's got to be tough regaining momentum. Absolutely, Once especially being on the top. If you pause at all in between your skills, you're starting from scratch. You're trying to generate all of that power and momentum from just a standstill muscle. And honestly, it's better to be safe than sorry, especially when doing a dismount. Yes, we did see one competitor for Champlain Park stumble on her dismount. Yep, yep. And especially with them being short, they really need to stay healthy now. Looks like the judges will have a meeting. 
Now this is because there's uh, too high of a discrepancy on the scores, correct? Correct. So they have to come to some agreement to pick one of the scores to be the dominant one. Usually this means that someone might, one of the judges might have missed something that the other judge didn't. So they're just discussing, seeing what they saw, and so on. And there is a lead judge out of the pair. Yes, correct? there is. The lead judge will have final say. Seems like they have quite a bit to discuss. It's possible that because she didn't finish her dismount, um, her start value probably changed. So they're probably accommodating for that and then the actual routine itself. How much this could this affect the next competitor coming up having to wait? Definitely uh, them waiting this long. It's all that more time that the nerves are building. So if you get the first gymnast goes and then you get to go right away you almost don't have time to get nervous and you just do what you're ready to do sure. the longer she's sitting here waiting it's she's nervous her teammates are nervous waiting to see what the judges decide definitely a lot going through their heads so that looks like the next gymnast is getting ready now our next gymnast will be celia or really She's doing a good job of staying connected on her rotation. And a stuck landing, another fly away. Now it looked like she almost lost her momentum going over the top. Yeah, just before she did. Dismount. She, had a, she had a few back to back skills of the same thing and especially when you're dropping down and coming back up it can be really hard to keep that moving definitely takes a lot of strength but it didn't look like she was affected at all by the routine before her she did a great job pulling that off not letting the nerves get to her this will bring us to our final competitor Ada B Drummy and our anchor for the team. Now, Coon Rapids competed against Blaine and Andover back on the 21st. Drummy finished third with an individual score of 7.3 back on that meet. She started with a nice switch kip to high bar. And another stuck flyaway dismount. Beautiful. We will have to wait her final scores. Looks like we are waiting for some of the final vaults happening as well before we can switch teams. Blaine Andover carrying a, a very large JV squad. Seven one five for her first score. Still waiting for the second judge to post her score. And that will be a 6.85 for Drummy. Only four competitors for Coon Rapids on the uneven bars. We will switch over to Blaine Andover We'll have that coming for up for you after this.
back at the gymnasium here at Champlain Park High School. We're on our third team on our second rotation. This will be the Blaine Andover on the uneven bars. We've already seen Coon Rapids and Champlain Park compete. First competitor for Blaine Andover, this will be Ella Doles. Starting her routine. Little short on the landing, but overall pretty good routine. Together, we were saying before the break that typically you will see a lot of competitors at this high school level uh, start their routines on the lower bar more often than the high bar. Yeah, it's really, really difficult going from high bar to low bar. That's a pretty difficult release skill, no matter which one you choose. Um, you definitely can see them, but they are very, very difficult, especially considering there's other ways they can get those points. Um, each skill has an assigned letter to it, A, B, C. Um, the farther down the alphabet, the higher level skill it is. So if a release skill is a level C, they could also get that same level skill by doing something simpler that isn't going to be as big of a deduction. Our next competitor will be Bella Pena. Daughter of Coon Rapids High School principal. And she had another stuck flyaway dismount. She did a really good job of staying connected through all of her skills, which is something that the judges pay attention to a lot on this event. Go back, the scores for Ella Doles was a 4.2, 4.35. Looks like this next gymnast is starting between the two bars, which means she's probably doing a switch kip start, which is a higher difficulty than the standard kip that we see. I mentioned Bella's dad, the principal of Coon Rapids. He is here in the uh, in attendance, sporting a Coon Rapids hat and a Blaine hoodie. Yeah, I heard tonight's parents' night, family night, something like that. It's always good to get everyone out watching. Of course, you got to represent all your schools that you're associated with. Of course. There's that switch kip. Now on the bars we have Jada Bonson. Very good form in this routine. You can tell she's paying a lot of attention to it. Looks very beautiful. And another stuck landing. They have these landings in the bag. High fives and a hug from her coaches. Blaine, again coached by Ashley Howard. Assistant coach Andrea Gross. Fourth competitor for Blaine will be Abby Blum Bloomquist. Another start between the bars. Wonder if we'll see the same thing. Abby awaiting for the signal from the judges. First initial score I'm seeing is a seven. One five. One five. Again, obviously only one routine average of the Two judges scores.
she's also doing a very good job of staying connected. And another stuck landing. More high fives from the coaches. Some fun air fives from her teammates as she Coach Howard giving some final words to Sophia. And we have scores. So now we have Sophia Larson, 6.2 for Abby Bloomquist. So she started from high bar, did a release down to the low bar, back up to high bar, right into a clear hip, little bobble. Even though she bobbled, she still has a really, really high skill difficulty in her routine, so she should be fine. Must be difficult to get back into the swing of things mid-routine, correct? It's a little more difficult on bars because like I said, you gotta get that momentum. So you gotta decide what you're gonna do before to get your routine. And she had a huge double backflip as her dismount. And of course, stuck the landing like we've seen with all these other Blaine Andover competitors. Yeah, yeah, even with the bobble, she has gotta be happy with that. That was a beautiful routine. So we will have to await Sophia's final scores. She will be the final competitor of this rotation. Up next, we will have two separate rotations. Our Coon Rapids Cardinals will be moving to the floor while Champlin will be starting on the beam. And then after that, looks like uh, Coon Rapids will move over to the beam. And we will have Blaine Andover start on the floor. It did take me 35 minutes to figure out how this rotation worked while looking at our scheduled sheet. Yeah, gymnastics can definitely be a bit confusing at times. I am seeing an 8.4 and an 8.6 for Sophia Larson. So that'll be an average of 8.5. It truly really is a big score. I believe. Highest score we have seen out of all of our competitors. So that will certainly help her team as they move on. We'll be moving on to varsity floor with our Coon Rapids Cardinals. We'll be back with that in a short moment. Back again at the gymnasium in Champlin Park, Minnesota. 
Our Coon Rapids Cardinals varsity team has moved on to the floor. We have Nora Ross out right now, who is actually one of our few middle school competitors tonight on the varsity team. I know we mentioned earlier that they were hurting and they had some, some teammates that were out, but you know, when the pressure calls, people come to show and the middle school got called and it sounds like it was a little difficult to get some of them to come up, but we got Nora Ross here doing a phenomenal job on floor. Coon Rapids will use five competitors in this floor discipline. You can tell she looks really excited to be here too. Probably very gr grateful for the opportunity. I know speaking with the coach beforehand too, they did also say that um, this varsity team is senior heavy and they lose a lot of them at the end of the school year. So having some of these middle schoolers or younger gymnasts getting the opportunity to try varsity ahead of time is probably gonna help them a lot in the next couple of years. And we had talked during one of the breaks, it's not all that common for uh, as you were saying, a club competitor come back to their high school level, correct? Yep, yep, absolutely. There's a number of reasons why gymnasts come to the high school level. Um, one definitely being that it's a lot more fun. People get to just love the sport and do what they want again. And how easy is it to bring on a middle school competitor? Um, it's actually kind of a complicated process because they have to prove that the middle schoolers they're bringing on aren't going to take the place of a higher classman gymnast. So they had to really prove that these gymnasts are out, they're not going to be back in time, and we need help. So naturally, with Coon Rapids only having four main competitors in the other events, looking to fill some of that spot. Absolutely. On the floor now, we have Leonie Kappel. And she's doing a really good job. She's also got great flexibility. She's showing off in this routine, which we love. Stuck landing. It was a very clean routine from her. Should get a pretty good score out of that one. What kind of a difference can it make having a more upbeat? music to perform to versus a, a more dramatic type? Um, so it's definitely about the gymnast. If you're more of an upbeat, go, go, go kind of person, you're going to thrive with that upbeat music and you're going to really make that routine that extra step where if you're more of a flowy, artistic type, that pow music might not be the best for you. So it's really about choosing what's best for you, what you're able to perform the best, and really just putting on the best show possible. Leone may be a little bit of a Britney Spears fan with no lyrics. Our next competitor, Angel Marshall. And she is one of our three all-around gymnasts for Coon Rapids. Dancing to the music from The Purge. A huge round-off backhand spring layout for her first tumbling pass. One and a half turn.
Kind of huge aerial, aerial back walk over. A lot of energy in this routine. Wonderful performance from Angel there. Now, as a judge, what type of things are you looking for um, from each competitor? So floor is pretty cool because there's so many things that go into it. They have the actual tumbling aspect, and then they also have the dance aspect, which I think people don't always realize. So the facial expressions, the staying on beat, you know, the energy throughout the routine, that is stuff that they do pay attention to. Fourth competitor for Coon Rapids will be Celia O'Reilly. Looks like she's going to pull a twist out for us based off of her warm-ups. Angel with a 6.8 and a 6.5. A nice round off backhand spring half twist. And one thing that is unique about floor is that if they are doing a front tumbling pass, they are allowed one step forward, as well as when they're doing a back tumbling pass, one step backwards. And it still counts as a stuck landing. No difference in how close they are to the end line? Nope, as long as they don't go over the white line, they are good. Nice flexibility in her straddle jumps. Another round off back handspring, back tuck. And then like we just talked about with what the judges are looking for, um, their dance, honestly, is probably where they're looking the most. And that's, people don't think about the deductions that come with dance, but they're definitely there. So even adding simple like somersaults or stuff off to the side that presentation looks good, it's their deductions to the judges. We wait the score of Celia before we get our final Coon Rapids competitor, Ada Drummy. We do have Champlin Park Varsity on the beam. I believe we just saw Hannah Davis for Champlin Park. I know Anna Drummy is one of our superstars of the night. Definitely someone to keep an eye on. And a 7.4 and a 7.0 for Celia. Round off, double back hand, spring back tuck is her first pass. She's doing a really good job of staying on beat and accentuating each of her dance moves. Front tuck, round off, back handspring for her second pass.
Round off back handspring, back tuck for her third pass. And she's got great form out there. And that will do it for Ada Drummy and our Coon Rapids Cardinals on the floor. Obviously, we will wait her scores. Some of the previous scores already earlier. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see Nora Ross's, but uh, Leone Kappel with a 6.5, Angel Marshall with a 6.65, and Cel Celia O'Reilly with a 7.225. So some high fives with her teammates from Drummy. Drummy, when competing against Blaine and Andover back on the 21st, finished fourth with an average score of 7.675. Looks like one of our judges is gonna make the walk across the floor. to potentially have a discussion or they are just gonna go on a break. 7.6, 7.85 for Miss Drummy. And that will do it for our Cardinals and the floor exercise. They will move over to the balance beam as Champlin Park finishing up with some of their last gymnasts. Blaine Andover taking a break. They will move over to the floor. And we will be back with our Coon Rapids Cardinals on the beam after this. Three-minute warm-up is up for our teams. Our Coon Rapids Cardinals will now take the balance beam for their fourth and final rotation. Over onto the floor, Blaine and over. We'll start. So on the beam, we will have our first competitor, Leone Kappel. Beam's always a fun one to watch because gymnasts either really love it or they really hate it. A little fall on the cartwheel. Sometimes, especially on balance beam, um, just jumping off and falling will be less of a deduction if you wobble a whole bunch. So sometimes that is the smarter move to go. Is it difficult then to get back into the routine right when you left off if you do fall versus it if you... It certainly can be. And depending on where you fall in your skill depends on if you can do it again. So if you touched the beam with your front foot when you landed, you can no longer do that skill again, that counted. But if you fell before your feet actually landed back on the beam, you do get a chance to do it again. So sometimes that can be difficult, trying to figure out if you can actually do it again or not. Sure. And ultimately, hoping that improves your score if you can get a review, Absolutely. High fives for Leone after her dismount. 
uh, depending on the skills that they have depends on their start value. So if they do fall on something and it doesn't count towards them and they don't do it again, they potentially just lost their start value and that could really affect their score versus if they just did it and fell. Our next competitor on the beam will be Andrew Marshall. Looking like uh, Coach Dieter's adjusting some pads, the mats. Yeah, that tells me that she's probably doing a dismount off the side of the beam. Which would be fun to see. Still waiting on the score for Leone. Blaine moving on with the floor comp their floor, their second competitor. Looks like she's gonna start with the springboard. Big jump on the beam. Right into a full turn, which looks harder than it is. Nice flexibility. And an aerial dismount, stuck landing. Seems like Leone is a little disappointed in her performance. Yeah, Beam's a very, very <coughs> mental, mental part of the sport. It takes a lot of nerve getting up on something four feet high and four inches wide, and then to try and flip on it. Imagine trying to carry those skills into the real world. Yeah. On top of a high <laughs> building or anything like that. We will have our third competitor, Cecilia O'Reilly, once she gets a signal from the judges. Probably should mention, too, that uh, Coon Rapids is opting to have four gymnasts in this discipline, similar to when they were on the bars. So all of their scores will count towards the final team score. We had a huge mount right off the start. Started right into a, a chin stand. Strong full turn. Couple big straddle jumps. I know we saw from her floor routine that she has quite good flexibility. Clean cartwheel, cartwheel. That's her connected skill. A switch leap. To a tuck three fourths. And handstand to back tuck for the dismount. They look super happy with her routine. 
as they should be. Certainly. A plethora of high fives from her teammates. We will await her score. Ada Drummy getting ready for her routine. Scores for uh, other Coon Rapids gymnasts. Uh, Leone Capel with a 3.875. Angel Marshall did have a 5.5. Looks like we're going to get another springboard mount. It's always fun when they switch up their routines, do something different try some of the more unexplored tricks. I brought it up previously, but when Coon Rapids competed against Blaine Andover on the 21st, Drummy did finish second on beam. So, probably uh, quite a bit to expect out of her on her routine. Yeah, she's been doing really good all night. You can tell she holds the spot of anchor proud. Still waiting on the judges. Looks like the judges are actually having a little bit of a conversation amongst themselves before they reveal their scores. I think I'm hearing the music from the Grinch for the floor exercise out of from Blaine. Happening just off screen to the right of Beam. Looks like the judges have come to an agreement. They will reveal those scores of 7.05 and an 8.0 for Celia O'Reilly. Now on the beam, Ada Drummy. Very clean full turn, which is a required skill. Showing off some of her flexibility. <coughs> then she goes right into her connected skill, which was back walk over, back walk over cartwheel. Three series connection will be worth a decent amount of points. right into her cartwheel back tuck dismount. Very, very clean routine. Round of applause from the crowd. After that dismount, series of high fives from her teammates as well. As we'll move our camera over to Blaine, still competing on the floor exercise. As we await the score from Ada Drummy. I'm not quite exactly sure who this is for Blaine. Sophia Larson, the anchor for the Blaine Andover squad. And she's doing just phenomenal. She did a front tuck to a front pike. So far, every skill she's done in this routine has been big. Her execution is phenomenal. You can hear with each each maneuver her teammates cheering and clapping her on. Did a huge round off backhand spring full. The great landing, waterfall down to the ground.
That really was a beautiful routine. Still waiting on the score for Ada Drummy on her balance beam routine. However, our teams will switch it up one more time. Blaine will move over to the balance beam. We will continue our coverage on the floor with Champlin Park as the scores for Drummy come out and it's gonna be an 8.2 for Drummy. So, teams will get another three minute warm up as they change sides. And uh, we'll be back with Champion Park on the floor after this. Back at Champlin Park High School for the final rotation. We are currently watching Champlin Park take the floor exercise. First competitor for Champlin Park is Teresa Un. May have to double check that. Yeah, this one. Iris Russell. No. One of the two. Oh. Front tuck into a forward somersault. I actually think this is Hannah Davis for Champlain Park. Round off, back hand spring, back hand spring, step out, stuck landing. She had a nice up tempo routine. Again, we are watching the Champlain Park. Gymnastics squad competing on the floor exercise. Blaine is finishing up their final rotation on the balance beam. Our Coon Rapids Cardinals is done for the evening. We have no official scores, team scores yet. All unofficial. Based on my chicken scratchings on my notepad. I believe we have Teresa Un coming up now. You can tell this is more of a soft routine, more flowy. Round off, back handspring, back handspring for her first tumbling pass. Leap into a wolf full. And 
front tuck into a somersault cartwheel. Stuck landing. Another round off double back handspring for her final pass. It was a very clean routine from her. Applause from the fans in the stands. High five with her coach. High ten, actually. Extra excited. <laughs> Next competitor is going to be Myra Kohler. <laughs> I've seen with the Blaine squad while on their floor routine, a lot of the JV and other teammates um, copying a lot of the movements. Yeah, that's always fun when that's how you know someone's a good performer because their routine is so exciting that their teammates are learning it too. And they're just as excited doing it from the sidelines as they're watching their teammate perform it. Round off back handspring, back tuck. She did go out of bounds. One and a half turn. Front flip into a somersault cartwheel. Switch leaf, tuck full for her leap pass. Round off backhand spring back tuck for her final pass. Overall, a really, really good routine from her. A lot of energy throughout. I think she liked it. Big smile on her face. She gets congratulations from her coaches. Again, that was Myra Kohler, third gymnast competing on the floor for Champlin Park. Up next, we're going to have Melina Oon. And we're seeing an extra mat brought over to the floor. Yep, that probably means she's going to have a harder difficulty pass than some of what we've been seeing. I believe that's Coach Wynia. Right, the last routine got a 7-5. The beautiful handstand showing off some of that strength and balance. Front flip, front flip for her first pass. Switch leap into a wolf full. Round 
round off, double back handspring, back tuck. Just barely stays in bounds too. Yep. <clears throat> then round off, back handspring, back handspring, step out. One and a half turn. And that was a very strong routine. With some higher difficulty skills. Another smile on her face. She walks off the floor. Should be proud. That'll lead us to our final competitor for Champlain Park. This is going to be Kaylee O'Brien. She's pretty much been the anchor for Champlain Park for each one of these events. Aside from vault, but even then still had strong scores. Looks like we're getting an 8.0 and an 8.1 for Melina Ung. And again, this will be Kaylee O'Brien on the floor. She's doing a really good job of performing each dance move to its fullest. Round off one and a half for her first series. Right into the second series. Front pike, somersault, to cartwheel. You can tell this girl's a performer. She's doing a very good job. Round off double back handspring back tuck. It's a beautiful finish. Looks like that will do it for our floor exercise from all of our teams. Still one competitor who looks like she just finished up on the balance beam from Blaine. We'll wait to retrieve the score from the judges of Champlain Park. Apologize to any viewers, I have not been able to pay enough attention to any of the scores on the beam for Blaine. This will be all guesstimation as far as how well they did. We'll uh, yeah. So scores in for our final competitor on the floor, Kaylee O'Brien with an eight five eight point six five, and I think that'll just about do it for our coverage here at Champlain Park for this triangular double duel. I don't have any official scores or team scores or anything like that, but Kether, how do you feel each team did? I thought each team did really, really well. Um, again, a guess, but I do think Champlin might have pulled out on top. Um, but I really thought that Coon Rapids really did do a good job, especially considering their circumstances. Every go girl that they needed came through, did what they needed to do. They finished the, the finished the meet. They gotta be happy. Certainly always tough when you have one less competitor to add your scores or pull from to it, help your average. Absolutely, it really puts the pressure on. Especially calling those girls up that maybe aren't used to competing at this level at all. So this very well could have been some of their first varsity competitions ever and their score counts you know absolutely well that'll do it for us here at Champlain Park 
Um, unfortunately, we don't have the team scores or any of the all around, but tune in the sports night on Monday night. We will have all of uh, the updated scores for you then. Um, until then, I've been Mike Peterson. I'm Kether Laszlo. And we'd like to thank you for joining us. Thank you.